This is Animal and Spectrum. Why is this a thing? Record. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. We're back. This is Tony, and I'm with Doug, and this is Analog Spectrum, and uh, it's another podcast for you guys to enjoy. Uh, Doug, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. You? Good. And we still have Lucy with us, so if you hear pig noises. Yes, Lucy the pig. Honest to God, man, it does sound a lot like a pig. It but does. She doesn't look anything like a pig. No. So, uh, <laughs> She's very chihuahua-ish. <laughs> very chihuahua, but beautiful little dog. All right, so what we're going to do today, this is a, you know, this is an idea we had. We're going to see how it goes. Um, we thought it might be interesting to talk about uh, uh, things that we're not necessarily experts but, but, on. I was just thinking about this just as you started okay, to say Okay, come, it. you go. Passion. Oh, okay, that's a good way to go. Rather than expert. We were going to yeah. call this like what we're experts at, but it's more about what we're passionate about right. than it is being, because there's plenty of people smarter than us. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, I mean, I know what I'm going to talk about today, and, mm. and Doug knows what he's going to talk about today. I know, I, and I'm going to talk about cycling, okay? And I know that I am, I, I know people that know a whole lot more about it than I do. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, But Doug, you're passionate about it. I'm very passionate about it, have been for a while, and, right. and I do think I have some interesting insight. We're going to try to, we're going to be, we're going to watch the clock very closely because I yeah. think both of these things are things that we can talk about ad nauseum. Yes. And Doug, what are you going to talk about? I am going to talk about coffee. 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 And you got to say it like that, coffee. coffee. And, and, and also, that's something I'm passionate about too, but, yeah. uh, but you know, but I, I look forward to hearing your input. Hey, I'm passionate about cycling as long as you put an engine on yeah. it. Yeah. I'm good. I, I don't like feeling, pedaling. I have a feeling like like, you know, we already agreed. That, oh shit! I keep bumping this damn mic stand. So with my with my head, no. Uh, <laughs> I I uh, I have a feeling a lot of the questions you asked me are going to be like, "Have you thought about putting an engine on?" That? Yeah, right. So uh, so, uh, but uh, do you want to start? Uh, sure, I'll start. I, yeah, I don't okay, mind, great, so. great. Okay, uh, just a little background. Um, well, let me let me preface the whole thing by saying. Um, <clears throat> I, coffee has turned into a thing over the past 15 or 20 years, right? Right. Um, and a lot of people will equate it to wine or bourbon or whatever in terms mm -hmm. of like the, the people doing tastings and stuff. So right. right off the bat, my thing is no need to get snobby about this. It's just really about what you like. Of course. And coffee seems to be one of those things that um, most people like coffee, but they don't know a lot about it. Um, so I, I take the educational approach here um, because I had to learn a lot. I worked for Starbucks for 10 years, um, became a coffee master through them, which required a lot of reading and a lot of uh, tasting coffee and a lot of uh, learning. And so um, I, the, the more I learned, the more interested I became, and so that's sort of how I become passionate about it. Um, but so really it comes to <laughs> it's the crazy dog. Uh, what, what it comes down to is what you like. And so I highly encourage folks to, um, just to try different stuff. And I'm not talking about, you know, a, a, a mocha latte versus a vanilla latte. I mean like the actual coffee part. Right. Um, but anyway, so, um, like those other things like bourbon and wine and stuff like that, um, there's a lot of factors that go into, to why coffee tastes the way it tastes and that, Kind of if you follow a, a timeline of a coffee bean, it starts with the soil, right? Mm -hmm. So different soil literally makes it taste different. Um, and, and the soils in Africa where coffee comes from typically is different than the soils in South America where it comes from. And so that tends to uh, impart a certain kind of flavor. But also, um, I don't know if you know this, but coffees grow on a tree and they, they're like a cherry. Right. And the bean is inside. Right. So how they get all of the all of the cherry and the muesli um, out or, or away from the coffee bean also affects the flavor. And what's, there's a, what's muesli? That's the I think I said it wrong, but there's a there's a like a little membrane that that protects the bean from okay. the the meat of the cherry. Um, but so how they how they separate the actual bean from the cherry mm -hmm. um, it also has a very big effect on the coffee. And there's kind of a couple of ways they they break it down to like wet method, dry method. And the wet method is they, they literally let the, the cherries, um, uh, not rot, that's the wrong word, but they, they put them in water sometimes and, and let the cherry, the meat of the cherry kind of dissolve or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's a dry method where they actually like husk them and then they, they put them on these great big concrete patios and they have to turn them all the time. And mm -hmm. they, they let the cherry stuff dry off uh, and then they separate it. But um, so, yeah, that, that I didn't. 
ever realize that, but that makes a big difference in the way the coffee tastes. In which way? Um, well, so for example, um, if you use the wet method, um, the coffee tends to be a little more like earthy. It mm-hmm. has more of like a, a, a smoother kind of a flavor to it. Mm-hmm. If you use the dry method, it tends to be a little bit more tangy or... Um, you know, some people really like South American coffee. So if you drink coffee black and you like it when it's like got that zingy kind of thing on your tongue, mm-hmm. that's probably Latin American type stuff. If so you, you could tell the difference, like when you drink. I it could now. totally tell the difference. Yeah, right. yeah totally. Yeah, uh, and then if but if you like it much smoother and um, you know a little more robust and earthy kind of a f- mushroomy, I guess kind of flavor. Right. Um, that's typically that wet method that they're using in Africa. That's and again that's super broad generalization but just to give you some kind of an idea Mm -hmm. um there's really uh, there's only two types of coffee beans Mm -hmm. um there's the arabica and robusta right and you see uh, starbucks really made this popular the arabica beans um they really made that popular and and the real the the difference is that um they're grown at higher altitudes Mm -hmm. uh, and they're harder to farm because typically it's like mountainous type regions right so the actual pulling the cherries off the tree is more laborious they have to do it by hand um so uh, those are typically a little bit more expensive and they say they taste better and whatever but honestly it's it's you know it's subjective so yeah and 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 no joke there was that commercial back when we were kids right the Mm -hmm. one with juan valdez Mm -hmm. remember that where yeah yeah they'd show them up in them up in the mountains of columbia yep picking coffee picking coffee yep yeah yeah still done that way today yeah they they i don't think i'm not aware anyway um of anybody that's like um, uh, mechanic mechanicalized that's not the right word uh, has uh, applied mechanical picking of coffee the word now yes <laughs> anyway, so you I'm listen, not I'm you not listen aware. Webster yeah. put that shit in the book put it in the book <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah so it's uh, yeah, I found that to be kind of interesting uh, automated maybe automated yeah okay put, that's the right word so so you, you got the arabica beans in the mountains. Yep. Where do where does the robusto grow? So the robusto grows at a lower altitude, and it's uh, either gentle hills or even like um, very very mild rolling hills, mm. uh, and it's so it's easier to farm. Um, okay. and, but the the flavor typically is not as deep and, and rich as arabica coffee. Right. But then of course you get into the whole roasting part, and that's a whole another yeah, aspect. I, so I know you and I have had conversations about this before. Yeah, and um, you know it was popular for a while in the late '90s after Starbucks was really, really booming. It got real popular, uh, especially up in Seattle where you lived. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a lot of those little boutiquey kind of places they just burn the shit out of the coffee. So yeah, that's all they know, did, well, man. We and talked like, about that. That was gonna, I was yeah. going to. I was going to mention that is that. Uh, that's another thing I struggle with with Starbucks is that to me they really roast that bean, you know, and it's yeah. hard. It's you know, so that and I and I love coffee, but you know, I'm a I'm a philistine when it comes to coffee. You right. know what I mean? And, right, but right. I mean, you know, I, I just like. But you you made the point. I like what I like. Yeah. No, and that's that's how it should be. It yeah. really is. Don't let anybody tell you different. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it's uh, it, when 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 you're when you're roasting coffee, it it pops kind of like popcorn. Mm-hmm. Um, so as the heat gets inside of the bean, it, it expands and mm-hmm. it cracks and pops. And so a lot of the early days of, of coffee roasting the, mm-hmm. of, of us growing in America, I should say, um, grew up with stuff like Folgers and that kind of sure. thing. Sure. Um, they roasted to the first pop mm-hmm. and the, the coffee ended up like a cinnamon kind of a color. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not because of flavor. There was actually a practical reason because coffee is sold by the pound. And the more you roast it, the more moisture comes out of it, the lighter it gets. Okay. So if you don't roast it as much, you get more pounds per bean. If right. That makes sense. So, so your Folgers and Max- Maxwell's yeah. was less roasted. Yep, exactly. And and we grew up, of course, our parents oh. did that, and our grandparents did that, and we probably when we, our first experiences with coffee were like that. So, right. um, we have that sort of in the back of our head. That's what coffee's supposed to taste like, you know. And then mm-hmm. Starbucks comes along and kind of like really expanded America. I mean, the rest of the world, uh, we're already brewing coffee in different ways and stuff. So mm-hmm. so that was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, so um, Starbucks roasts to uh, the third pop mm-hmm. and other uh, lots of other companies, Pete's, if you're familiar with Pete's, oh, yeah. um, they typically do the third, even sometimes the fourth pop. And so the darker it gets, of course, the more concentrated the flavor. Yeah, well, so on that, 
you know, because there are, you know, when they say like dark roast or so mm-hmm. forth, that's what they're talking about, mm-hmm. right? Yep, you know? exactly. What Does talking. it change the caffeine? Um, I, it might, but um, I've never been, I, I don't know the scientific answer to okay, that. Okay, okay, um, yeah. But, you know, I've never been one to really care. <laughs> well, I only ask because, you know, usually when I see that in a store and it says dark roast, uh, you know, and, and th- this is the way my brain works, I... I associate that. That must mean more caffeine, but maybe not. I don't think so. I okay. think it's like so. If if you again, if anybody out there knows the answer to this, feel free to to, to let shoot us know. Yeah, yeah, but Please. I would think that you know a bean has going to have x num- x mm. amount of caffeine in it, and then the more you roast it, it, the caffeine might become slightly more concentrated. But I don't know if caffeine is actually moisture related. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. So anyway. Um, so that all that part is kind of cool, and then the last part of of the what can actually change the flavor of all this is how you brew it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's good old fashioned drip, right? Right. And even that you can change. I mean, if anybody's like me, I don't ever measure coffee when I'm brewing coffee. So it doesn't yeah. put it. I, I do if I, I do if I'm doing like a press or something. Right. But if I just make coffee in the morning, me, I eyeball it right. So right. some days it's strong, some days it's not, and it just right. depends on if I'm heavy handed or not. So. You know, all those elements come in to, to change. So if you get kind of snooty about it, mm-hmm. which, which I don't, um, you can be super precise. You can measure it all, and you can get the exact right kind of bean roasted to the exact kind of way you like it and all that. And then you can have a really consistent experience mm-hmm. with coffee, which, whatever. To me, I like the way it tastes. I drink, I'm, I have a really wide palate of what I like. Right. Um, so, yeah, but to me, the best way to brew it is is the the Italian way with a little bialetti, mm-hmm. and you grind it really fine, and you put it. It's sort of like espresso. You put it through high pressure. Oh, and, oh, it's so smooth, man! It is so so good. And so if you like milk with your coffee, it's even better. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, uh, and we're, we were talking about uh, you know my next my next thing is going to be cycling, and I know like when I got my most recent bike, I was at a bike shop, and you know they were all you talked about the. Uh, the uh, uh, Bialette, right? Mm-hmm. And they were these these guys were like, "Hey, while well, we're fitting here for your bike, would you like a cappuccino?" Because you know they're totally mm-hmm. diving into that whole yeah, Italian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, sure, you know. But uh, so, uh, uh, just thoughts, you know. How do you take your coffee? How do you just you, you usually take it black? I, I can I can do black. I can do milk and sugar. I can do lattes, caramel. I can do it all. But uh, on a regular, like I'm getting up, going to work, I right. have a little milk and sugar. And 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 uh, I know you said people take coffee how they take coffee. I mean, do you ever find yourself? I mean, and you, it's totally cool. I, do you ever like judge any? Like you're like, oh my god, that person's drinking flavored coffee. But no, no, I couldn't yeah. care less. Yeah, right. No, it's it's yeah. It's just like you're wearing a blue shirt versus a brown shirt. Right. Whatever. That's yeah. Thing, yeah. Well, that's also like when we talk about bourbon. I could talk about bourbon, and people are like, I can't believe you take ice in it. It's like just drink it however you want to drink yeah, it. Yeah, no, you know, exactly If you want to drink right. it with yeah, Coke, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, you know? no doubt. But uh, so, uh, just uh, like your coffee journey, like, mm-hmm. like because you know we both of us were in the military, mm-hmm. right? I mean, uh, you know, w- I think about that sometimes. When you think about coffee, mm-hmm. like the very first time, you know, like, like I think it's almost worth talking about. Like both of us were underway. Mm-hmm. Coffee was a thing. Coffee you know? was yeah the blood, the lifeblood of the ship. Yes, um, and it wasn't usually good coffee. No, no, usually not. And the, and nowadays, like Folgers and a couple other companies, they make these. Pre-pack things, mm-hmm. and you can drop them in your filter and push the go button, and yeah. it's all measured out, and it comes out the same every time. When we were just like, yeah, you get some some thirty-year bosun mate who likes tar for coffee, right. and he just pours a whole bunch in there and lets it sit for hours and whatever, and then you get the other guys that are don't know what they're doing, they just sprinkle some, you know. So it's yeah. super super inconsistent. Well, yeah, I I, I uh, you know because uh, I I joined in like eighty nine was my first year in. And you know, and we've talked about this before too. God, this is gonna be a, that. This is gonna be the state statement for this podcast. We talked about this before. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, the uh, that uh, there, there was a there was a time, and maybe it's still the same way, where you, everything was warehoused in the military, mm-hmm. and you would fill out you know requisition. You you know yes. way more about this than I do. Yep. And uh, I remember the first time I ever got underway, we got coffee, and it was in green cans, and it was mm-hmm. Vietnam era coffee, mm-hmm. and it had been like freeze dried. Yep. And that coffee was like you're saying, like tar. Well, I, I, it's funny because you talk about coffee journey, yeah, and that's exactly it. So I would just drank coffee like everybody else throughout right. my military days and whatever. Uh, when I actually got a job at Starbucks, I, they require you to taste different coffees from different parts of the world and brewed mm-hmm. in different ways and whatever, wow. just so you can start to understand like there is actually differences. You can actually taste the difference. 
And then I got I got the gig. They put me in charge of teaching the class mm-hmm. for new people. So then I had to do this tasting all the time. And one of the things that we did was to 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 um, expose people to the difference is we did brew some commercial regular coffee like Folgers or whatever it was, mm-hmm. whatever brand it was. And man, I could I mean I got to the point where that stuff to me it tasted like you took old dirty cardboard and soaked it in water and that's what you were drinking that's, mm. that's what it really it tasted horrible to me not even just like oh it's not good like acidic and nasty like chemically is what mm. it ended up tasting like uh and then so i did get a little bit snooty about it for a little while sure. and, and then i realized like oh, wow what a dumbass it's like could be, you drink whatever you want you know what i mean right my dad still drinks folders every day so my more, dad drink, my dad drinks max maxwell house yeah too. okay yeah. more power yeah. to you man i'm not um, uh, but anyway, so um, it was interesting to me that prior to that, I had, I had no clue. I had just was no knowledge mm-hmm. and, and, and not even a negative way. I just didn't know. Um, but the thing that really got me, this is the, this after all my coffee stuff, this one thing got me. And I think my wife bought me a book about just kind of the history of coffee. And I actually read this book and I was, I was like, man, that is it is a cool product of the globe. Mm-hmm. Um, so many neat stories in here about it used to be in, in some of the Arabic countries mm-hmm. you were not allowed to talk bad about the king or the sultan or whatever right it was you get beheaded I mm-hmm. mean it's just like a, a total um, crime except at coffee houses mm-hmm. even to the point where there was a king or a sultan or somebody who was in charge of this particular district and the, the like the, the the civilians were kind of like revolting against him and he he realized that, that they were all gathering at coffee houses right the resistance mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh and so he closed the coffee houses they beheaded his ass they were like nope I, they cheat they, i'm on they, board i'm on board with that yeah man they they yeah they rang him up and took his head off and opened all the coffee houses back again yeah and, and a thought also is that uh, your wife worked for Starbucks too. That's, she did. Yeah. That's where you guys met. Yep. Yeah, we did. Yep. Yeah, so. we met in England, and yeah, yeah. She even she was even lucky enough to go on uh, what they what they call the um, this. What is that dog doing? Crazy dog. Um, she was she was lucky enough to go to South America. They sent her to South America and work on a coffee farm for a little while just to get that what? experience. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Super cool. She yeah. was she was Juan Valdez. She was Juan. So, uh, and, and yeah, if anybody's curious and you don't know what we're talking about, look it up on YouTube. Yes. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, another question. Yeah, that, you, you mentioned, uh, the way other countries prepare it and, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, as far as French press versus, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was, I, I was going to comment that, and, uh, just being able to get coffee, like when we went, we uh, our other podcast was about us going to Africa. You know, we were drinking. We, we did end up. Oh, that's actually something that was actually kind of a funny thing about that is, uh, you know, I, you and I used to smoke. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell you right now, we don't we don't use tobacco anymore. Mm-hmm. I do drink alcohol, uh, but I, I can go long periods of time without drinking alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, like getting back on cycling when I'm in a period where I'm about ready to get for a ride i don't drink or anything like that mm. uh but uh i have to have coffee every day i have to mm. i mean i'm very and, and to me there's this huge balance between uh between uh you know i just enjoy drinking it mm-hmm. you know it is it is something that I, I get pleasure out of drinking but plus i get the i get the you know i i enjoy the what it does to me too okay. you know you know it's funny because i don't notice the, I don't notice the caffeine part. Really, I really don't. I mean, there's the, my wife is gone right now um, for a couple of weeks, and there's been a couple of mornings where I just don't feel like drinking coffee. Wow. I just water instead, and like I, I don't feel any different. I totally, if I don't drink it, it's a problem. Wow. Yes, and wow. I drink a lot. I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, so do I. I mean, four or five cups a day. Same. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I try to keep it at five. Yeah. You know, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I I definitely. Hmm. But when we were in, when, but again when we were in South Africa, uh, uh, we uh, we you, you know, drink we, at the instance. Oh, though, right? yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We drink at the instance, but but <laughs> your your uh, your sister in law, you know, her kitchen had a cowboy coffee pot. Oh yeah, and she had it as a uh, as a decorating decoration thing. Right, and uh, and I remember like saying because I know how to use it. You know, right, it's not right. always not hard. It's percolator, right? right? And I was like, "Can I can I take this with us?" <laughs> and and I, and I think she thought I was I was crazy, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, we used that percolator, yeah. you know. And I, I I honestly thought that she thought I was I, you know I was going to mess it up, you know, or whatever. But no, nah, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But that thing was a godsend. Yeah, you know what man. I mean? it was yeah. awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we and I brought some. I brought 
you know, some coffee from here that I liked, you know, and right. And I'm kind of like you. I'll drink whatever, you know. Yeah, but if you if you have the ability to make it the way you like it, then you do it, right? I, and I'm willing to go through the effort. I grind yeah. beans fresh every day. Yeah, I don't. I don't like pre ground coffee. Yeah. Um, but I'm willing to put in that effort because yeah. I like it and that's it. But if I don't care, right. somebody, somebody wants to whatever, drink instant, whatever, it doesn't yeah, bother I, me in well, any way. And I have a, you know, we, you know, both my wife and my wife is a, she drinks it black, you know, mm-hmm. she, mm-hmm. she is, she's like me. I, I drink it with just cream, you know, okay. and, uh, and, and it goes back to my drinking it with cream goes back to the military mm-hmm. back when the, we had Vietnam coffee. There was right. just no freaking way. You I can't drink that black. black. <laughs> I can't drink it black. <laughs> it's like, and it's I drink like it with, I drink it like, I drink it with like a half cup of sugar, yeah. half cup of co- cream, <laughs> half cup of coffee, <laughs> and you'd pour the coffee in and it would just still be black. Yeah. They would just like <laughs> suck all the color right yeah, out of it. The military <laughs> latte. <laughs> yeah. it, was like, it was like, it was like, uh, you know, and you, and you would drink a cup choke it down and yeah. you would just immediately shit yeah. <laughs> hey look oh my God. Laxative. It's like something something is wrong with yeah. me it's like no you're all right uh. Yeah, but uh so uh but uh the uh you know uh so so we have a keurig we, we, and the reason we have a keurig is that one pot of coffee won't get us won't, the day. won't do it it yeah. won't do it yeah we have to and uh, and we drink a lot, a lot of flavored you stuff. Know, it's funny. That's the only thing I I don't really like coffee out of a Keurig. Yeah. I mean, I've I've tried a couple different, you know, whatever you try yeah, the yeah, Dunkin' yeah. Donuts flavored stuff sure, or whatever, sure. and that's that's all fine. But um, just to like have a cup of coffee, I, I just don't I just don't like the way it tastes. Yeah, to yeah. me, I don't notice the difference. Yeah, it's great. I mean, well, I do flavored too. I have a lot of flavored coffee. Well, once um, uh, once uh, as as you've mentioned a couple of podcasts ago, um, we're in the middle of a transition, so we just bought a house and. There's going to be a whole bunch of... Oh, you of, did buy it? Yeah. Oh, so it's done? Uh, well, we closed later in, we, in a few weeks, but yeah. Doug rolled in and we immediately started working on the podcast. We yeah, we didn't catch up. Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, so anyway, we're closing in a few weeks. And then when, once that's all done and we get a good one, uh, we'll have you guys come over and do a coffee tasting. And this is yeah. really interesting. If anybody decides they want to do it, um, you just get three coffee presses and you get three different coffees from around the world. And mm-hmm. you brew them all at the same time and then you taste them one right after another. Mm-hmm. And that's the easiest way that you can really, really tell a difference. But if I poured you a cup of African coffee, you're going to go, hey, it tastes like coffee. And then a week later, I give you a Latin American. Oh, it tastes like coffee. You, know, you can't tell, right? But you put literally put them next to each other, and man, you can totally tell. Ethiopian coffee like smells like grapefruits when huh. you, when you got it right next to a South American Colombia or something. Wow, I like that. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. We still have to do the uh, the uh, listening to music and with the tube, the tube. Oh, oh yeah, so yeah, the tube amp. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, the only other thing that I would say is, um, you know, brewing method does actually change the flavor. Like I, I said, I don't, I don't, um, I don't dig the Keurig thing, yeah. and I don't know why. I've, I've never really cared. I just tried it a few times. Like, eh, whatever. It's super convenient. Yeah, I, that's I, mean, the thing. I love it for that. But um, yeah, I, I would rather just go through the effort, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and coffee press and and the Bialetti are those are my two favorites. Mm. Um, but it, my only problem with the Bialetti is it's just sort of a pain in the ass to clean it up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little fiddly well, and you got all little parts to it and stuff, but God, it makes good coffee. Yeah. Drip coffee maker, whatever. That's what, that's a, a yeah. convenience thing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, and no I even, I even bought one that, that brews an extra two cups. Right. So, yeah. yeah. But I don't do the, I don't do the coffee that some, you know, uh, um, Siamese cat pooped out. No, I, you know, I don't do all that stuff, man. Whatever. <laughs> that's a thing. Oh, yeah. You don't know about that? No. Oh, no, really? Uh, so I want to say it's in Indonesia somewhere. There's a there's a particular wild, I think it's a cat. It's a wild animal of some mm-hmm. small, small muskrat-y kind of thing. Uh-huh. Uh, and they, they actually eat the coffee beans off the trees. Uh-huh. And then somebody figured out, and this is the thing, like, where yeah. did this come from? Right. Oh, let's follow that guy around. He eats the <laughs> coffee beans. Let's pick the coffee beans out of his poop and brew it. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, so people do that. I'm like, what the hell? But yeah, so apparently it's... A super delicacy and all that, so all right. you know, so it was balut from the Philippines, but I don't eat that either. Yeah, you know, I was wondering about that kind of stuff. Like what, the first, I, I would, like the first guy who ever did artichoke. Yeah, it's like it's a pine. why would you? It's yeah. a pine cone. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like it's, it's like it's like, uh, but they're good. I like them. Yeah, yeah same yeah, here. Yeah. But I would not have been that I first be, guy. Be, it's like oh my gosh. You know. Yeah, so, <laughs> sewer rat. Pork, sewer rat might taste like, like pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, you know, and and I'm, and and I've always heard you. There's always that uh, statistic that says, you know, there's you know, we only eat like three percent or something like that of the edible plants. Of what's and, edible? Yeah. Uh, what's edible? Yeah. You know. And uh, yeah, but the other ninety-seven 
percent came out of a cat's asshole. Yeah, you know right. I mean? exactly. so it's like a yeah. no pass. Thanks. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's like, it's uh, like no. Uh, do you want Maxwell House or do you want cat poop? Yeah, it's like, cat poop coffee. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. Uh, so. But uh, anyway, yeah. So that's my thing on coffee. I, I, cool. I, you know, at the end of the day, it's it really is. It's about what you like. You yeah. Know, if you want to, you want to pour caramel and uh, you know heavy cream is go for it. If you want to drink it black, whatever. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, whatever you're gonna do. But um I I just think it's kind of interesting to learn about uh, the 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 actual product of coffee yeah. and how it was developed. There's so many cool stories about the Dutch and yeah. um how they how they actually um colonized South America and they brought coffee. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, anyway, so yeah, there's there's a lot of cool stuff about coffee from the historical perspective. Yeah, so and and, and it's a great topic cuz it's it's yeah. super important to me too. I mean, there's there's a we again things that we're passionate about and that's mm. and I would I would share that passion. Yeah. No, that's I would, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So tell me about bikes, man. I want to know. Yeah, tell probably me, what's huge, the, I, usual. This like, one this one we don't share. We don't. We yeah, don't. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay. You know, yeah. that's actually kind of part of it. Yeah. Uh and and I'll get to that, but uh no, you know, I, I really haven't prepared, so I'm just kind of going to talk, and and I don't think I'm going to be, you know, my may not be, probably won't be as interesting as, as as your topic, but no, no, no. no. Yeah. Well, let me let me start by throwing a question at you. Okay. First question: How? Because how did you get into bikes? Because okay. when you and yeah. I, yeah, yeah, when you uh, and I first met, I mean that wasn't a thing. And then I think when you were up in Virginia, I came up and we no, went I hiking. Do I didn't do it then either. Yeah, we went hiking, but there was no yeah. bike thing involved. No, so how, where no. did this start? Oh yeah, and and uh, and I, I, I I'm glad you asked. I was because I was I was going so. Probably in about two thousand three or two thousand four, I was living. Uh, uh, I, I was working at Fort Sam Houston in Texas, and. And you know you have one of those moments in your life where you're like, hey, you know, I, I, I need to get in shape, and and so I think I'm gonna start uh, going to this gym, which was a few miles from my house, and start working out. And I always know that if you're gonna start lifting weights, which I need to, you need to do some aerobic stuff first. So I'll just buy a bike to mm-hmm. ride to right. and from the gym, right? Okay, got it. And that's how it started. You're so practical. I know, but the truth is, is I never started lifting weights, uh-huh. you know, but uh, or going to the gym or anything like that, though. But so you, I bought I bought a mountain. Did you ride right by the gym, gym I, and go to Dairy Queen? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great. I love this bike. <laughs> <laughs> Does it come with a cup like holder? David, David Lee Roth one time was asked if you know did he did he uh, did he uh, did he exercise uh, to stay in shape back when he was uh, uh, and, and he, he said yeah. yeah he said he tried he tried he tried running but the ice cubes kept falling out of his glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I've never heard yeah. that so no, you know, but it, but so from there, you know, I I bought a mountain bike. And, and, you know, and, and I was, I was working with this, this, uh, other, I was working with this doctor and, and he was a big cyclist and I was like, what should I buy? And he said, well, I'll buy a mountain bike. Cause it's kind of, mul- it's, you know, multi task bicycle. Mm-hmm. And probably within about, you know, I started riding it around everywhere. And I, I, uh, I was like, no, I kind of want a road bike, you know, I, you know, because, because you, you learn pretty quickly that. You know, a mountain bike will go this fast, and a road bike will mm-hmm. go this fast, yeah. and and there is there is a difference. You know, you do want you do want to go faster, not just for, you know, you want to get where you want to get. You know, okay. Okay. and uh, so it's not that like the speed adrenaline thing. It's just like you want to get where you want to yeah, go. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's 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 in, it's interesting uh, because. You know, even, I mean, like when you first started, you weren't you weren't like, oh, I want to be Lance Armstrong no, or whatever. Right? As a matter of fact, I, I, it's it's weird. You know. Uh, I think one of the reasons I've taken to it is, you know, for, for, you know, you know, I know like, for example, both you and I like to tinker with things, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, a uh, bicycle facilitates that. So right, right. if you're kind of a, a gear nerd or a, a mechanic nerd or something like that, you know, it's something that, that, uh, that, you know, th- that's a, that's a good hobby. Uh, plus you just buy a lot of stuff, you know, like, you know, the computers and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And that figures into it too. Uh, I just find bikes like really beautiful, you know? Mm. Uh, and you know, every time I look at, you know, look at a, you know, look at the bike or I'm working on the bike, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's like those sketches that you see like of Da Vinci, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like the gears and the chains and the way everything right. kind of works together. And, uh, and so, so it's and plus it's kind of a low impact thing, I'm sure. And and uh, compared to running, but you know probably pretty quickly after I got started, this two thousand four, two thousand two thousand five, you know, you know I think everybody that kind of gets into it, 
you know, starts to gravitate towards certain things. Like obviously some people like mountain biking and some people like, like, uh, you know, want to race and some, and there's all kinds of things you can do, but like there's types of racing where you can, you know, do like cyclocross or something like that. Mm. And cyclocross is kind of this cross between, between, uh, road biking and mountain biking. And I just kind of gravitated towards like long distance riding, you know, I like to, I like okay. to do like the, the, you know, the kind of extreme distances and stuff, you know, not, not at any particular speed, but right. I pretty much found and getting back on the, you know, this, the, the reason, you know, going certain, a certain speed is important is that, you know, when you ride like a long distance, it's not about, uh, the, the distance it's about how long you're sitting on the bike okay. you know like so in other words yeah, yeah. like like six hours on the in the saddle is is a long time to be in the yeah. on the doesn't saddle. matter if you go 20 miles or 200 miles oh, exactly so, yeah. exactly and so uh, so you know so right away you know i start i start oh you know there's all these these uh event rides you know that are that are interesting to me you know okay. this one is 60 miles this one's 100 miles and all this kind of stuff and so i started doing those things you know okay. and and you know and that's kind of where it just all kind of took off you know where where next thing you know i was doing doing like super long distance rides not okay. super long distance i mean they're 100 miles is a is, is a is a typical ride right right but so yeah. So what was the first ride like when you decided to go? Because I know you, and I yeah. know how you are. So yeah. th- that very first ride. The, like, long, the long one or the yeah, first? The first, like, organized. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm a cyclist okay. now because I'm going to go ride <laughs> yeah. in this organized well, ride. And it's funny. You know, okay, so I want to comment on uh, – uh, and, and we're going to try to remember recommendations because one of my recommendations is going to be uh, – uh, is going is gonna, to is gonna kind of dovetail into what okay. I'm going to say right okay. now. You know, a lot of people, because I've been doing this now for like 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't consider myself an expert on it or anything like that, though. But I do know other people that ride. And occasionally I'll have people come to me and say, hey, you know, I'm kind of playing with the idea of like getting a bike, right? And I'm always kind of, I'm always like, uh, yeah, I'm not your guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not your guy to do that. (laughs) So, because I I read this this, uh, book, and it's going to be in my recommendations today, where. Uh, the author of the book, he, the, the book is all about these vignettes uh, that while he's writing, and and he tried and to kind of cut to the chase, he tried to get a bunch of individuals interested in cycling, and and the issue with cycling is you do have to kind of break through a lot of pain mm-hmm. to get to the point where it's actually kind of enjoyable, you know, like the position on the bike and yeah. the, the, the sitting. It's gonna be the one of my next questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a long, you know, there's a process, and a lot of people just don't want to deal with it. It's right. it's not it's not enjoyable right. initially, and so so he he wrote about it in a way that made was much more eloquent but that's the bottom line is that right. you know if I, I don't want to talk people into doing it right you know. uh but the first one i ever did uh was a hotter than hell and I, I can't remember what year it was probably like 2005 and uh, that's a ride in texas and i was out on a ride maybe doing like 14 or 15 miles and i saw a guy with a hotter than hell jersey on and i was like what's that and he says oh yeah it's a ride in wichita falls and I hardcore trained for it. Okay, mm-hmm. I like trained like crazy because it's scary. You know, the whole yeah, yeah. hotter than hell, hundred miles. Wow, and uh, uh, so it, it. So that was your first like organized bike first ride? organized bike ride, hundred mm-hmm. miles, hotter than hell, big event. It's mm-hmm. a matter of fact, honestly, I am riding that ride uh, in in a week. Okay. So same ride, uh, however many years later. Right. So, uh, uh, but but I trained so much for it that when I rode it, it was it was actually not too bad. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, you know, because uh, I was very trained up for it. Okay. And I think That's that gave good. me a, that gave me a false sense of security about how. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're a badass now. Yeah, because the next <laughs> ride that I that I did was another hundred mile ride, and it beat me like a dog. Right. Yeah. So I, I remember that was it was actually again in Texas. It was a in, it was a in Fredericksburg. I don't think they have this ride anymore, but it was called like the the Fredericksburg Fall Foliage Frolic or some shit oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. And it sounded it had such a nice name, yeah. and uh, it was hilly as hell, and just oh, beat yeah. me like a like a ridden mule and uh and so yeah and it was always my goal never to uh, drop out of a ride okay uh, not or, or not to sign up and not do it not you do know? It, yeah. yeah and uh i wish i'd not done that one <laughs> yeah and then and then so you know i did that for a while and then i moved to seattle and and seattle and when i was in seattle cycling became a very i got i cycle i rode to work you know and i right and up there they have a ride uh from uh seattle to portland and i did that several times so I, I did that five times and and twice I did it in one day. So wow. yeah, yeah. I remember visiting you up there in Seattle and you were riding to work and I just remember thinking those bumpy ass streets and that skinny ass <laughs> tires and the hard seat. Well, you're you know, an idiot, man. What are you doing? You know what's interesting about it is uh, well, for one, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about because I rode this morning and uh, and 
and we can probably tell everybody we're in Texas now. We're, we live in Texas. Uh, but uh, if you're okay with that, I don't yeah. think you care. Yeah. And I always told, you know, and I moved back from Seattle. I've been in Seattle for like eight years. And people are always like, man, you know, I bet people are terrible in Texas. You know, they don't like cyclists. And Seattle Seattle's such a cycle-friendly city. Yeah, kind of the opposite was true, really. Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason I think maybe my my – the reason I think it's that way is uh, is Seattle is like so – saturated with cyclists and i know how what a pain in the oh, ass okay. they can be oh, and i think yeah. a lot of people are like oh, i've got a bad taste in their mouth yeah now. and yeah. now here i think people and, and people right live around us are pretty polite and i you know right. and it's, it, it's kind of a novelty you know knock wood you know right. that you know I, I, people always give me plenty of room well you like get the thing is like i noticed here in texas i've driven all over the world from from africa yeah. and europe and right. whatever all over the united states and people in Texas really do like when there's a car on the side of the road, yeah. know, they pull to the left and they give them lots of space. Yeah. You know? yeah, I don't, I don't remember seeing that anywhere else like that religiously, right? Other than here, right? So I think there's a conscious effort here. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never had anybody do anything uh, malicious, like knock, okay. again, knock wood. Right, right. I never had anybody and in Seattle. Well, I had I, one time I had in Seattle, this woman yell at me. It was weird, but uh, <laughs> it was really awkward. I was like, why? But uh, like, like a. Uh, me and another person were riding uh, out in the country, and she goes, I don't know. I guess she was having a bad day. But here, I, I've had a couple of – I've had one close call. One really close call terrified me. And uh, and the person actually came back and apologized. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was weird. You know, but I think she just – yeah, I don't know. Maybe she was on this her wasn't paying attention or something. Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was close, God. Oh, I mean, phew. yeah. And then uh, – but, uh, but yeah, you know, so, so you know, now, you know, I, I don't know. I mean – you know, I think, you know, the one thing about cycling is it's kind of my, it, it does give me that zen. I, I, you know, like where we're talking about coffee, but, you know, like I got up this morning, it's like 530, you know, you know, like it's kind of a pain because you got to mm-hmm. get geared out, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, you know, and, but once I'm out riding, you know, you know, I, I, it's, it's just, you know, nice right. to be. Yeah, I feel, I do, I, and, and you know, we were joking earlier, but I do feel like that um, with motorcycles. It's yeah. like, it's, you got to put all the crap on right. and over pants and jackets yeah. i mean because i've come off my bike and slid across the pavement and thank goodness i was wearing all my gear yeah uh so that stuff that works and it helps you know yeah i've wrecked a couple of times yeah so um but yeah i get that i get that i get that zen thing um oh yeah the, the two things that i'm gonna get is pedaling and I, i'll ask the obvious question that non-bicycle people always want to know like what the hell's with the hard seat man yeah i did oh well you wear you wear the, i wear a uh bib, it's, you know bib shorts right right and so i have a chamois you it's know it's a pad yeah. it's a pad yeah. that, that, that you know and uh yeah it's weird <laughs> uh it's weird uh uh yeah, just padded. I don't know what it is, but you do not want to ride with a padded seat. You do yeah. not. You do, it, it's uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. You, you want the hard seat. Okay. And uh, I mean, my all my bikes have. I mean, I don't well, know. Clearly, that's it's, the it, thing because everybody yeah. has them. So yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, I I got I wear bib. I wear bib shorts, it's, and that's another thing too. Is like when you talk about gear, mm. like everybody starts to like I'm not wearing spandex. You yeah, know, I'm not yeah. wearing that shit. Yeah. You know, and pretty suit. You know, I'm gonna wear bike. I'm gonna wear. You know, thing you know, you're in. You yeah. know, you're wearing. Yeah. You're you're wearing everything. You know, the whole the thing. You know, the you know just going through the bike and. Uh, you know, everybody has pedals that you clip into, right. you know, everybody wears spandex, everybody wears a helmet, you right. know, everybody, there's this certain kit that that, right. that everybody's going to wear. And, uh, and if you don't, you're going to kind of, it, it's just not going to be as comfortable, okay. you know? And, uh, so my cut off jeans and my banana seat, yay. Oh, not gonna cut so, it. <laughs> so, uh, one time, uh, uh, one time I, uh, like when I was up in, uh, again, I was up in Seattle, we were in the military, huh. I'd retired. Okay. And, uh, and my, uh, the, there was a seat, the CEO of the base, like he started cycling. Right? right. And he goes, Hey, uh, you know, Tony, you know, why don't we do a ride from Seattle to Bellingham? And, and that's about a hundred miles. I think it's a little bit over a hundred miles. Mm. And I was kind of like, yeah, sure. And he goes, we can make it like a big event. We can invite other coasties to come and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I, I'm kind of like, all right, but you know, uh, you know, this may be like a bad idea, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, and you know, Captain, we'll do whatever. And I appreciate the fact that I'm retired. Okay, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. so I can give a shit now, right? Right. right. And uh, and so you know, we we plan this ride. About you know, 15 or 18 people show up, and of course, there was people that were kind of, and again, this does sound pretentious, I get it, but there's like about five or six of us that are, you know, we know what this is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I mean, I'd kind of trained for this ride itself. And then there's a bunch of like chiefs that showed up. You know, they're like, you know, they got cigarette packs rolled up in their sleeves. <laughs> they got their wife's bike. You know, it's got the big padded seat. Yeah. You know, and and 
I'm like, yeah, man, this is not going to work, you know? Right. And so, so we start riding and, and, you know, I said, well, you know, I'll ride in the back and, and I'll kind of sweep. I'll be the sweeper. I'll yeah. sweep, you know? And, and we got to the, we got about maybe 20 miles north of Seattle. There's a, a trail called the Centennial. It's, it's rails to trails and it's straight, it's like straight, pretty flat, right? right. A little uphill. And so I'm in the back, you know? And, uh, uh, so I'm not even pedaling. Like I am, I am the the weight of the bike is like moving me forward, and I'm like passing these guys, and I'm going like, and they're and they're clearly in pain. Twenty miles right, right. is no joke. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. twenty miles if you know, if you never ride, that's a long way, to, especially yeah. like when you're riding your, you know, the same huffy you had yeah. when you were like like eighteen, right? And I'm like the Walmart. Special. I'm like yeah, I'm like oh man, and uh, and so so I go up to the cat i ride up to where the captain is and i'm thinking yes yeah, isn't gonna work you know right. and, and i remember him like kind of getting into my ass a little bit he's like this is supposed to be a fun ride for everybody i'm thinking and so like real quick i said i'm just gonna be honest with you captain just did the math in my head if we're gonna ride this speed it's gonna take us about four days okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like i'm just like we can't do this okay i don't know how we're gonna do it but somehow we need to tell these guys when we get to the end of this trail that they need to, you know, we need to, you know, sag them. We need to support the gears. What they right, call it. Right. We need to sag them out, you know. And uh, and they did. I mean, but uh, I felt bad. But, I mean, not that bad. I mean, yeah, 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 I, think yeah. they were, I think they were probably thanking me. Yeah, once we got to Bellingham, we stopped at the Coast Guard base up there, and they made us spaghetti, and it was great. Right, nice. But, uh, but. Well, I only, went riding with, I only went riding with one of my captains once. Yeah. And that was in probably about 2000. Right. We were in Puerto Rico. Yeah. I was on the Coast Guard Cutter Eagle. Nice. And uh, my captain was an awesome guy. And um, we all went out. I don't know. I think we rented bikes, typical uh-huh. thing. We rented bikes. We were going around. And uh, we ended up at this bar. We're drinking beers and whatever. And then we're headed back to the to the ship. Uh-huh. And, and the captain's got a beer in one hand. And he's drinking his beer as we're as we're going downhill. He's one handed on this That's awesome. rented crappy bike, we right. felt like a weave right. all over the place. And then his cell phone rings. He's like, Oh, and you could see him like trying to decide. He didn't want to get rid of his beer, you right, know. Right. So he chucks the beer out the side of the road, grabs his phone, and he's now he's talking to his wife mm. on and this is we're downhill probably fifteen, twenty miles an hour. Yeah, you know, probably faster actually. Yeah, rolling, yeah. you know, down these curves and stuff yeah. in Puerto Rico. And I, I'm right behind it and I'm thinking to myself, like, oh God, who's a second in charge? Because yeah. this dude's gonna get whacked by a car. Oh, big man. Time. I mean it was traffic. It was just well, like a trail. We were right on the side of the road. And I can tell you right now if we've gone downhill, it was faster. Yeah. It was probably like yeah. close to like twenty five yeah. or thirty it, miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Man. So anyways, but yeah, so that's the only time I ever rode with the captain. Last. I won't do it again. Yeah, I will tell you that we can talk about downhills. I mean that's I, that's my, my, everybody loves that. Well, so so I've got a new bike, newer, and I have my older bike, which I've had, you know, and and I think it's got about fifteen, fifteen, twenty thousand miles on it because wow. I, I use a computer to monitor it, right? Right. And uh, and that, and just to speak to that for a second, I, I know that some some people are like, why do you need a computer? All that kind of stuff, you know. And I do not use it for like working out. I don't look at the data and say like, right, oh right. my gosh, I can, you know. And I will tell you, I've got all the freaking bells and whistles on it. It's a, right. computers are cool, but uh, but I'm not later on going back and saying, well, you know, but, you know, if I change my pedal stroke here, it's going to make me faster. Right, right, right. But but it is really cool. I look at like the the information that it saves. It does. I do think it's interesting to know how far it's gone. You know how mm-hmm. far I've been, and also I can go back and look at like for example, I did like the I mentioned doing the Seattle to Portland. I've done it a few times. And that's a, that's a two hundred mile ride, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I spent you know two so so that's a lot to unpack. You know, when right. you go when you spend two hundred miles on a bicycle in one day, and you know, and you're you know, and, and and you and I again have talked about this where, you know, comparing the motorcycle ex- experience to the cycling experience, when you're riding, you are really just kind of you know you talk about pedaling, you know it's you know you're really just kind of in the environment, you mm-hmm. know, and so after you spend like ten twelve hours on a bike. It's like your brain has just got too much information mm. in it. You know, you, you, uh, you're amped up. You know, with right. everything that's going on. But it's always nice to go back, and I can, you know, put, you know, Seattle in the, Seattle to Portland in my my Garmin and, and your history. And, and there's my history. I can see it, yeah. it's, and, and, yeah. and I can remember it. So it's almost like taking a photograph. Right. Uh, but uh, where was I going with that? The but but. Uh, we're talking about you're going to brag about your new bike. Oh yeah, yeah. so yeah, I am going to get brag on that. It's funny. One of the, one of my friends is always busting my ass about what I talk about the bike, but uh, but the old bike, like I can I I could get on downhills, 
And and 45 miles an hour is about as fast as I want to go on a bike. You know okay. what I mean? Down a hill. Mm-hmm. Or at least it was on that bike. But that bike was very stable, like mm-hmm. super stable going downhill. Mm-hmm. And I always wonder, like, people would, like, ride the brakes on a hill. I was like, why are you riding the brakes? You know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like you know, just enjoy the, the mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. The new bike, okay, mm-hmm. is a little wiggy on uh, downhills, yeah. a, little, a little spooky. Yeah. Like, I, I just did a ride uh, on Tuesday, and, and it was very hilly, but there was downhills, and they were also on busy roads. And uh, yeah, I've you know I ride the brakes, you know, yeah. it, a little a little freak me out a little bit. Yeah, I get about forty miles an hour, and I was like, I think I'm gonna die. Oh, that's funny. It's, oh yeah, well the roads on Texas are chip seal. Yeah, no, that, it's not that. good. It's yeah. funny because I rode this morning on my motorcycle, first yeah. time in a while. It's been just it's just been too hot. Yeah. And I rode this morning, and I was like, man, I'm out of practice. Like I had to look for the damn turning indicator thing. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I forgot where that was, and I was like, oof. Yeah. So I, yeah, I need to ride a little more often. But I mean, there was a there was a period of time where I rode literally every day. I rode back and forth to work, like you with your bicycle, yeah. you know. And um, you know, after a while, you just sort of like it sounds cliche, but you kind of become one with the machine. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get yeah. so familiar and so yeah. comfortable that everything you're doing is is second nature. Yep. On the bike, and, yeah. And that's when it gets really enjoyable because then you can you can trust that as a as a the ability to control the machine the way you want it and mm-hmm. do, do make it do what you want it to do. Right. But then you can kind of let go of that. And then you can start to really enjoy the, the environment that you're in and all of the details. Cause when you're first learning, man, you're just focused on not killing yourself, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, I always think about on the, like, like getting comfortable with it's one and the other end is, is how quickly you get task loaded. You yes. know, even yes. when I, you know, like you're, you know, and, uh, like with the new bike, you know, uh, is is even though they're all kind of similar, but it's got a different it's got a different component set, and uh, the shifters are a little different, so it took a little while. To, but now that mm-hmm. it's second nature, it's like tying mm-hmm. your shoe or right, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. And so, uh, so the, uh, but uh, no, yeah, you know, uh, uh, yeah, the the my my older bike, uh, I, I bought that again. I think I, I want to say two thousand four was when mm-hmm. I got it, and uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting because. Uh, you know, going back on, you know, we uh, living lived in Seattle and rode my bike everywhere. Like rode my bike all over Seattle, right? Mm-hmm. All over the, all over that area, you know, all through the through the you know, over to uh Bellevue and and you know, up into the mountains and all that kind of stuff. And uh man, it gave me a you know, it re- you know what it reminded me of two things. Uh well, and I was going uh, well, one thing first. Uh <laughs> that uh it just gave me just like an insane familiarity with the city, and it reminded me like when I it reminds me like when I was a kid, like when we had mm-hmm. bikes as a kid. Like you would ride your bike everywhere. Oh, yeah. You just knew where every you knew everything. You knew everything. Yeah. You knew where all Al, the shortcuts. Al, 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 all like of it, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Matter of fact, when I left Seattle, I think one of the things that that really made me sad amongst multiple things was. I was leaving a city that I felt very, you know, very intimate with. Connected, yeah. Yeah, I was very connected. Yeah. And the other thing, though, that's all I was going to say, was, is, is that riding a bike reminds me of being a kid. You yeah. know, like, you know, like we were talking about during our 70s uh, podcast that, that uh, you know, when I when I go out and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, like you, you would say, you know, Oh, mom! I'm just gonna go ride around the neighborhood, and then mm-hmm. say, "No, you're you're exploring the world." Yeah. yeah. Even this morning, when I went for a ride, I I kind of had a route picked out, and and I ended up saying, "Like, oh shit, I'm I'm, I'm kind of off I'm kind of off course," and I just start riding up this hill, and like after like about like about a mile or two, I was like, "Holy shit, I'm lost!" You know, I, mean? yeah. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I don't know where I am. You know, <laughs> and so I, I did like, pull my cell phone out. Thank God, right. and I and I was able to put together a route real quick. But I was in uh, neighborhoods and things like that that I'd never ridden in. You know, right. and that was kind of cool. You know, and uh, well, yeah, that's, that's also the beauty. When uh, I used to ride with a couple guys out in California, yeah, and uh, they were both engineers, right. And one of them's more of an engineer than the other in terms of like personality. Right. It was like total. Total engineer guy. Right. Love him to death. Been my best friend for a long time. But um, when he plans a trip, mm-hmm. I think you're similar in this way. It's like all the details are yeah. there, right? All the details. And um, when I plan a trip, I'm like, oh, where are we going? Yeah, okay, let's go. And I, I get lost half the time. But And so we made a good riding team because when we get lost he would be able to pull us out of that and get us back to where we were going. But right. he really enjoyed seeing the stuff that he never would have seen. Right. When, if he would have stayed, because he'll like, he's going to find the most efficient route. We're going to take the freeway. And I'm like, screw that. The freeway sucks, man. Let's go find the cool road, you know? Right. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, this is a dead end. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, because I'm not one to use GPS on a motorcycle mm-hmm. and, and on purpose. 
Um, I have one now that's kind of like kind of cool because it's built in, but um, that's really all I use it for. I change the screen so it shows me all of my data, so it shows me miles per hour and you know how much fuel I'm burning and stuff. But I don't use it for the map unless I'm like, oh shit, I don't know where I'm at. Then right. I can go back and, and pull it. But um, so yeah, that, that worked out good. I, I really enjoyed the that combination of us because I mean I never I don't go places where you know I don't get lost in Compton. Yeah, you know what I mean. We're getting typically getting lost somewhere that's in wilderness area, which is always pretty. But you know, like we talked about on a motorcycle, bicycle, you're exposed to the elements. So if yeah. you get too lost for too long, you suffer. Right. I mean, which yeah. just, I, that's enjoyable to me. That that the gravity of your decision making. You know, it's it. I like it. Probably the only thing like like I do I do plan stuff out mm-hmm. a lot, but the, but a lot of it has to do with that. You know, if I go ten miles down a road and hit a dead end. Ten miles is a long ride. Yes, you know, twenty miles. Yes. I mean, twenty miles is a lot. Yeah, you're pedaling. So, I'm twisting my throttle. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. exactly. So, so, it, so, I will tell you. Uh, yeah, so, so that, that's one of the reasons I was like, I can't, I'm pretty sure I can, I can make this work. Right. You know, right. but if I had pulled out my phone and it, it, and of course, it, yeah, around here is because of the military. Mm-hmm. It's a real possibility you could just go to a dead end and you're yes. like, you know, because you're up against a, a fence. fence yeah. A, yeah, fence. Yeah. So, but. Uh, but yeah, you know. So and also, when I train, I usually map something out because I want to do sixty miles. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But on that, <laughs> one of my favorite stories, and I, ho- and I hope my friend is listening that because he's going to know the story. Like we were up in Seattle, and I bought a book, you know, and this book was like, you know, fifty great rides of the Puget Sound, right, and I was right. like, I was, and 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 so, and I actually met the guy that wrote the book. He was a good guy, and uh, but he, you know, these are really well planned out routes. Routes he'd tell you, you know, it's too hilly, and I was like, yeah, how hard can this be, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, this is even kind. Of, this is kind of early google map you know okay and so so i get on the web page and i map some shit out you know mm-hmm. and uh and i find this route it's like a 35 40 mile route it's up near a town called carnation up in the mountains and uh and so so it's just him and i we rode together a lot and I, i'm gonna see him in about a, a month because we're gonna do a ride out in utah together and uh which is i'm sweating by the way but uh <laughs> There's a hill on the, this ride called the Big Nasty. Mm. It's big and nasty, but I and I'm, I don't know if I'll be ready. But that's but I Whatever, digress. Yeah. yeah, I digress. So so him and I go on this ride and we start riding and uh, and we get to this. Uh, we get. Have I told you the story? I don't. Know. I don't think so. Okay, so we get to this uh, place where there's a a, a a a guard like a gate, right? Okay. And not like a South African gate, like a gate gate, right? Yeah, yeah gate gate. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so, but, but it's it's lo- it is clearly a logging road, but it's paved, right? And it's nice smooth asphalt. And so we go past it. I said, let's just keep going because I think this is going to loop around, right? Because I got the, I mapped it out, bro. Right, right. So we go through there and we go a little ways up, maybe about ten miles, and uh, it turns to dirt, but it's hard packed dirt, right? Okay. And we're kind of doing the slow uphill, and I and I go, do you want to keep going? And he's like, yeah, let's just keep rolling, man. Right. And so we, we, we go past this, and we get about another 10 miles, or maybe five. I think the whole loop was like 35 miles. But it would, we were going some distance. And I, and, and I could know in my head that this thing was going to loop around and pick back up a major road, right? Mm-hmm. But then it turns to like real ass gravel, oh. okay? <laughs> and we're on road bikes, right? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, – and I'm thinking, dude, I think we got like another five miles. You just want to just man power up. through. Let's just power through. It's like, okay, because but to go back now, it's way. It's like far. sixty yeah, miles. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a much. It's gonna yeah. be a bigger ride. Right. And and uh, we've done some hills, you know. Right. And so we. So next thing you know, we go and, and we <laughs> right across this bridge. I swear, it looks like one of these old railroad trestle bridge. Right. It's, things would get a little dicey, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm thinking about this guy who writes his book. I'm thinking, okay, now I get why they buy people buy this book, right? Yes. You know, and so we make this little turn around this, and we go down this really steep gravel hill, and there's another gate. But this time it isn't like one of these like gates. So it's like like may, you know like it's a recommendation. Uh-huh. This is like you go through here, you're probably gonna get shot, right? Yeah, right. It's, and it's a, got no trespassing signs yeah, and yeah. shit, you know. And and I'm thinking, I think if we go, and I I, I say, bro, I think if we just go through this thing, haul ass, That's we'll it. be okay, right? And he's like, oh, God. He's like, fuck. Yes. Okay. So we go through this, and, and we, we, you know, we have to, you know, work around this gate. Uh-huh. And, and it's a reservoir. Okay. And this uh-huh. is pretty close to like, this is like, you know, now, you know, people, you know, people don't like the whole reservoir thing, yeah, you yeah. know, water for the city thing. Yes. Right. And, uh, you know, back in Batman time, this Joker would poison his stuff. Yeah. It was, you know. <laughs> And so we haul ass, and and we we and you can see off in the distance there's these buildings, you know. And we're running down this now it's paid, but and we we go over this this other bridge, and this bridge 
uh, is is across this ravine and 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 there's a big gate on the other side of the ravine and there's like barbed wire across the top aye, of it aye. and i mean it's no it's no it's like you know you know world war ii prison camp shit right <laughs> and, I, and i'm like what do you want to do man and and i'm like let's and, he, and i and and you know the other side is safety okay the other right. side we're you know we, we right. got we got france right uh-huh. and so and so we scaled this thing like a couple spider monkeys we throw the bikes over man we, we somehow we do it without getting injured none of us get you know tangled on the constantino wire right hit the ground haul ass right can't believe we got away with this right okay we get about another mile down the road now here comes a cop behind us man uh, <laughs> so it comes like well you know i don't know like reservoir federal reservoir security police, yeah guy yeah. pulls up and he opens his door and he's just sitting in his car as we come riding up and he's looking at us and and i stop and i just basically like start i almost like start blubbering i'm just kind of like dude i'm fucking so sorry man <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, man. I was a guy, man. We were like, and, 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 uh, and he just like, he goes, he goes, that's all I wanted to hear. Uh, you know, and funny. he let us go. Yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, stupid shit happens, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, that's funny. I, I have almost the identical story. Um, my friend and I just went on a motorcycle trip and we're up in Redding, California. And we decided we wanted to cut west. We could see some roads on the map, you know. Yeah. We just wanted to cut west, and same deal. We were on road machines. These were not. These were these were BMW RTs, and they're right. meant for the road, you know. Yeah. And um, same deal, man. It just progressively got worse, and we started to climb this mountain on this gravel road, and we were like, "Oh, we don't want to go back now." Da, da, da. And then, oh shit, man, that was a long. It was getting dark. We had mm. no water. We were running out of gas. And we ended up in this teeny little town, and uh, we stopped to get some gas and some food. And uh, we, I, this is, I'm trying not to laugh when I tell the story, I swear to God. So we, we finish our meal, this tiny, tiny little, it was like a main street, but mm-hmm. I, there could not have been 100 people lived in this place. But, um, yeah, so we finish our meal, we get gas in the bikes, and we're just putting our helmets on, getting ready to take off, and there's a bar across the street. And... Uh, some it had the typical saloon doors. No way. Some Ooh. guy comes flying out of the doors, mm-hmm. rolling on the ground, you know, and some of the dude comes out with a pistol. <laughs> he's like swearing at him and cussing at him. He didn't shoot him or nothing, but he's was, I was like, okay, we need to get out of here. And just about the time we get on our bikes, and look, this could not have been a minute later, these three girls come out of the bar, and they are each probably 60, 80 pounds overweight, maybe more. Mm-hmm drunk as skunks laughing giggling and all three of them pile into this t-top trans am and burn out and take off and mike and i look at you like we're gonna get the hell out of here man it was like, <laughs> we just got out of there quick as we could so, but those are the kind of ventures that make the that make motorcycling yeah. or cycling yeah. and it makes it fun man it's yeah. it's it's, it's kind of hairy at the time but sure when we have yeah. a, we, and you and i have stories about that too yeah yeah so yeah good stuff, but right? uh but yeah and, and probably my last last kind of thought on this is if you buy a bike don't ever sell it just keep it just keep it yeah yeah that's so, cheap enough or no the thing is i was I, and I, I guess that's more advice to myself is that like uh, i you know I, I pretty much own every bike that i that i bought i did sell one one time and i regretted it so i ended up rebuying it i didn't buy a, I didn't buy the exact same bike but oh, but but I bought the same model. Same time, yeah. yeah, same model. But, yeah, uh, I'm not that way with motorcycles. Yeah. I'm just not. I'm not yeah, sentimental well, about that. I just like eh, buy, it, sell it, move it. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I'm, you know, and, and yeah, you know, I, I'm not sentimental about a lot of stuff. Mm. But uh, but something about that yeah, again, it's like, like my the bike that's got like a gazillion zillion miles on it. I'm, mm. the, you know, that, dude, I'm definitely connected to that. I feel yeah. big, and yeah, also because no, no. you do pedal it. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so, no, I so, get it. So yeah, you feel I get you, it. you do kind of feel connection with it. Only the only the only thing like that I ever got rid of that I regret. I've had. I could not tell you how many cars I've had. Right. But that Mini Cooper that I used to have. It's oh, really? The only car I regret getting rid of. It was so damn fun to drive. Yeah. Oh, it's like a yeah. street legal go kart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My thing with the bikes is that I just feel I do feel a connection with them. You know yeah. what I mean? So, sure. uh, and I mean, there's I, there's probably I, like I said, I've got, I think I've got uh, six, I guess. Hmm. And there's probably one or one or two that I could that I wouldn't miss. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but uh, but I did the one I sold. I didn't think I would miss. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah. But I got parts for it coming in the mail today. So uh, cool. Anyway, yeah, so that's just kind of my thoughts on cool. cycling. Cool, yeah, my yeah. thing. Well, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those deals where um, I don't think I'm ever going to be interested 
in bicycling, yeah. so that's probably not something you and I can ever do together. But we can damn sure drink coffee together. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, and, and like I said, with the cycling thing, it's it's. Uh, I don't know why. You know, it's just it's just something you know that I just like to do. You yeah, know what I mean? That's so cool. yeah, 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 and and uh, and uh, you know, but I'm I've gotten to the point where you know, again, I'm no expert. And it's funny because like when I bought the most recent bike, yeah, I, I when I was talking to the guy, when I, I ended up having to piece it together, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, and and uh, yeah, it's a it's a fucking great bike, but uh, uh, but you know, I had to buy the frame and then the components and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And then I I was at the shop, the guy, and and he was like, well, you know, do you do you what kind of wheels do you want? And I was like, I don't know, fucking round, you know. And <laughs> well, I, I had an idea, yeah, sure, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. You know, I had a pretty good idea, but uh, but he but you know, I said, uh, you know, uh, you know, I kind of had told him, but he was asking me questions, and I was like. I don't, don't know. know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you know. It's that way with me with audio gear. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, geez, what kind of stylus? Well, there's $30 and there's $300. Yeah. And there's $2,000. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and, uh, you know, and it's <laughs> actually what I told him was, is that I wanted ones with that are kind of a, a deep wheel, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, and because I just thought it looked cool, you know, right. that's honest to God. I was like, I just thought it looked cool. Mm-hmm. And he, and, uh, and he was like, and I told him, I said, well, you know, I want something with a, 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 a a high, a deep profile, mm-hmm. and and he was and, th- and he was asking me about that, and mm-hmm. and I was like, g- g- g-, you know, I was like, what's the advantage or disadvantage, you know? And he right. says, he says, well, uh, you know, the the deeper the profile, the faster the wheel. But and I was like, yeah, you stop, but I fast, mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah, you know, uh, just do the, you know, and they're not they're not the deepest, but they're like forty five millimeter, which are which are nice. And I, and but the the but was the fact that if you if you catch a side wind, it's a kite. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Got it. And yeah, it is. I mean, right. I didn't. I wish. I, I'm fine with the wheels, but there is. You need to keep your hands on that bar. Okay. You know what I mean? So, okay. so, but, uh, but that, yeah. Right. So cool, man. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I don't like I said. I don't think I'll ever get interested in it, but yeah. I think it's interesting. But um, I just don't want to pedal. I know. I hear you. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, no, no. <laughs> Again, and and on that recommendations. Yeah, okay. recommendations. And, yeah, so, the book you so, were so, about. so so there's a a book uh, called uh, uh, the Metal Cowboy. By a guy by the name of Joe Kermansky. Okay. And uh, it was one of the first books I ever read uh, about cycling. And this guy, uh, Joe Kermansky, uh, and I think I'm saying his name right. If not, I apologize. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because, like, you go on like, Amazon. It's on Amazon. Uh, it was published in 2002. It doesn't have a whole lot of reviews. I don't think a lot of people have read it. Uh, but uh, but I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, it's just 40 essays about his experience and he cycled oh. all over the united states oh, that's so cool. he's just, so he's, he's ridden across the united states up and down dozens dozens of times interestingly you know his picture was on the 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 uh, the book you know the dust jacket right right and i was at a bike expo in seattle and uh and i saw him at the expo right mm-hmm. and so i go up to him and i was like hey are you joe kermansky mm-hmm. the metal cowboy and uh, he was like, yeah, you know, and, and <laughs> super nice guy, cool. uh, very gregarious, you know. Nice. But one of the, it's and I don't want to, and I would highly recommend reading the book. I don't want to give too much away, but, uh, so no, no spoilers, but there's a story in there. Most of his stories are kind of humorous, but there's one story that is just a freaking heart wrencher, man. Mm. I mean, written really well, right? And, uh, and so I said, dude. What was what was with that essay in the Metal Cowboy about blah blah blah, right? And he was like, "Man, that's the way I like to write, man. You know, <laughs> left, right, left, uppercut. You know." And I was like, "Well, yeah, that was an uppercut, was an uppercut all right. Yeah. That was an uppercut. You know." So, uh, so again, I yeah, I can't recommend. It. I mean, it's a, it's it's probably been fifteen years since I read it, but when I was okay. when I was kind of thinking about this uh, that's, podcast, that's yeah. interesting because I I'm also recommending a book today, and it's also yeah. been about fifteen. I want to say fifteen years, maybe yeah. fifteen, yeah, something like that. Since this book was published in two thousand and eight, okay. and I read it probably in twelve or something like that. Um, it's called The Art of Racing in the Rain. Oh, cool! And it's by uh, a guy called Garth Stein. And uh, have you read this? No. Oh, you need to read this because it's not about racing. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's not. It's about his dog. Oh, well, that's cool. Man, they made a movie out of this, and I think it was commercially successful, the movie. It wasn't like a blockbuster or anything, mm-hmm. but, dude, I'm telling you, you read this book, and it is a tearjerker, man. This book mm. is amazingly good. If you have any any compassion towards animals, especially if you're a dog person. No, you know I am. Oh, man. You, I, you're going to hate me and love me for, for recommending this book to you, um, The Art of Racing in the Rain. It's, it's super good. Cool, cool. Yeah. So. Well, all right. Yeah, we've been going for 
exactly an hour. So. God dang, we're getting good at this. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, all right, well, again, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. And uh, sorry for the, sorry for the dog pig noises. <laughs> there wasn't. It wasn't too yeah, bad. She wasn't too bad. Yeah. And I uh, hope you all have a great day. This has been an Analog Spectrum production and presentation. All you Spectrum maniacs out there, whatever platform you're using, are you following us? If not, why not? Following us is one small step for a man or a woman, but it is a giant leap for humankind. And it really helps get our small but ever-expanding show out there, too. Also, please listen to all the episodes, or at least the ones you think might interest you. If you like it, then share it. Spread that positive analog spectrum vibe. It's a great way to show your friends and family how much you care. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a big kick out of seeing our numbers steadily rise. Finally, leave a comment and rate our show and the episode. Five stars are always appreciated. Moreover, we want to hear from you. Share your show ideas and ask your questions. We'll even answer your questions on the show if you'd like. You can email us at analogspectrum, that's all one word, at gmail.com. If you tweet, then tweet at us. That's at Analog Spectrum. Finally, we have a Facebook group. I don't do much on there, but I watch it like a hawk. You put something on there, and I'll see it. Again, thanks for listening, and we hope you have a great day.